mechanisms of valuation itself. Uh, earlier uh, we have uh, looked at uh, uh, using the dividend discounting model as well as the free cash flow based discounting model to evaluate the stock. The same thing on the similar lines we will be looking at the residual income based valuation model. But the clear cut difference is when we talk about the residual income <coughs> it is purely based on the income statement. The values are picked up from the income statement wherever when we where, otherwise when we had talked about uh, the free cash flow we were computing the free cash flow using the elements of the income statement as well as the balance sheet. So this is uh, purely uh, from the accounting based income statement itself rather than the real cash movement. So the valuation which we are doing here is slightly uh, different uh, from the other two mechanisms wherein the intention is to compute what we call as the residual income for the future and based on that try computing what is the value of the security. right? So, what is the way we are defining this residual income? In a way, we also call it as economic profit. So, the way we are uh, defining this uh, residual income is nothing but whatever the accounting income that is there. From this accounting income, subtract what is the expected return of the equity investor. So, let us say from an accounting process, once we have occurred, once we have got through the EBIT phase, we generally deduct the interest that needs to be paid to the lender, which will uh, take us to profit before tax and from here we deduct the tax and say this is the net income. Now, this net income may be positive. But is it in line with the equity investors expectations or has it exceeded the expectations or has it fallen below the expectations? That is what is the definition of the residual income. Whatever the accounting income that has come out, if I subtract the expectation of the equity investors. How do I know what is the expectation of the equity investors? Whatever was the equity capital that is there, multiply it by the required rate of return of the equity investors. That is what is giving me what is the return that this equity investors are expecting. So, the focus here, do not just go with NI is positive is it really meeting the expectations of the equity investors now if it has met and if it has exceeded probably there is going to be a positive vibe about that particular security if it has fallen below the expectation probably it might be treated negatively by the equity investors because this is more to do with meeting the expectations or not meeting the expectations or even exceeding the expectation so that is where we say this is a measure of economic income not just the accounting income. So whenever we are trying to compute that particular uh, residual income, uh, we are looking at by how much is it exceeding the expectation. So if the security is going to exceed the expectations for the next few years, obviously uh, the the, uh, the investors would be more interested in buying it and the value of the security is typically planned to go up. So that is where we say ROE minus R is the key determinant because ROE is purely based on the net income, net income divided by the equity capital is what we are calling as ROE minus R. R is the required rate of return. So, this is what the rate of return which the company has generated minus R required rate of return by the equity investor. So, if this is positive, 
the it is expected that the value of the company is going to go up compared to the current value if it is lesser the value of the firm is going to go down so roe minus r is a key factor and at the same time the growth rate the rate at which the company is planned to grow here the intention is why am i bringing in uh, the growth rate growth rate is what will contribute we have earlier looked at the growth is coming by roe times the uh, the retention ratio so if the growth is very high i can expect that over the future the residual income is also going to go up but if the growth is going to be much much lesser probably the residual income may come down drastically so to understand how the residual income is moving over the next few periods we are looking at uh, the growth rate also so that's where we say the key drivers for the residual income are by how much is the actual performance return on equity greater than the required rate of return and what is the growth rate uh, what is the growth rate in the residual income if it is growing drastically probably the value is going to be much much higher we'll see how do we find out the value using this residual income model but we also see a couple of small variations of the residual income mechanism one is the market value added which is nothing but the total market value of the firm when i say total market value the value of debt market value of debt plus market value of equity whatever that is the total from a market dimension what is the value of this particular firm minus the invested capital which is nothing but by how much extent did the value of the firm increase over what has been invested so right from the inception phase right from the inception stage what by what extent is the market value above the invested capital the higher it is the higher the value addition that has uh, happened in the process so by what extent the management's decisions have really influenced the stock market that is what uh, the market value addition uh, uh, as a tool is performing even this can be computed year over year discounted to the present value all these kind of things can very well be done to find out the value of that particular stock so generally this is uh, not used from a valuation dimension but most of the times it can be used from performance appraisal kind of a dimension probably to appraise the managers and uh, so decision analysis kind of stuff all these things can be done quite effectively using this market value added there is another dimension called economic value added which is a slight extension to this concept of residual income itself because in the residual income we are taking the net income minus whatever the required rate of return times the book value of equity so this is purely targeted towards the equity investors whereas when i am using the economic value add i am targeting the whole firm not just my equity investors so instead of ni i'll be taking ebit into 1 minus t because ebit into 1 minus t is the benefit which is uh, uh, which is generated is the profit which is generated both for debt as well as equity investors which is an equivalent of ni equivalent of net income when i am taking it at the firm level so r is the required rate of return by the equity investors now when i take the firm based investors then r is same as weighted average cost of capital and when i am looking at book value this book value is of equity i take it to the firm level this is equal to the invested capital which is nothing but the summation of debt and equity so basically i can very well look at the economic value add 
as by what extent the profit of the firm increased the expectations of the investors so if the profitability of the firm is much more than what the investors as a whole have expected it is going to generate a very positive economic value added otherwise it is going to create a negative value addition but before we compute this ebit and all getting into this particular ebit into 1 minus t we actually call it as nopat net operating profit after tax here some things that are advised are before you actually compute the net operating profit after tax make these adjustments r and d generally uh, you may treat it as a part of uh, operating expenses operating leases you will treat it as operating expenses whichever the things which can be capitalized all these things you better do a capitalization and then go to the computation of no pat otherwise we will see the results very heavily fluctuating so it is suggested that whichever are these things that can be capitalized especially r and d operating leases goodwill and any kind of amortizations that are being done all these things you better capitalize them and uh, based on those capitalized capitalized values update uh, the income statement and from there compute the profit after tax operating profit after tax same way deferred taxes don't get into the deferred taxes look only for cash based taxes with all these adjustments you get into the computation of net operating profit after tax and from where you can get into the computation of the eba part whereas uh, i mean the focus of this session is primarily on uh, residual income itself what we are saying is even you can try to work out with economic value add and market value add also as uh, the tools for as, as the tools which are resembling the residual income or the economic profit so just to compute getting into a small numerical uh, aspect right which is involving the computation part let's say if i am saying ebit is this much okay let's take let's take one small calculation ebit is 442 interest is 93.4 so from here i can find out that my profit before tax or earnings before tax is uh 348.6 million all right out of that i am paying a tax of 78.1 million which is giving me that my net income is going to be 270.5 million fair enough this is the accounting net income part then i have my total debt 159.4 million equity 